Amalite Soap, Your Beauty Hope, and Luster Cream Shampoo for soft, glamorous, dream girl hair bring you Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden. <laughs> Our Miss Brooks teaches English at Madison High, but one of her favorite subjects at school is biology. Or to be completely honest about it, biology teacher Philip Boynton. He's tall, dark, handsome, and painfully timid. <laughs> but Connie Brooks is still hopeful. In her own words... I'm still hopeful that he'll look up from his experiments one day and decide that I compare favorably with some of his higher-type frogs. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow I feel that if I could just be alone with him a few hours, he wouldn't mind my not being wart green. <laughs> it looked like last Saturday was going to be the day. I was thinking about my plans when my landlady, Mrs. Margaret Davis, obeyed my instructions to wake me at 8.30. Connie, wake up, Connie. It's 8.30. Oh, come in, Mrs. Davis. Good morning, Connie. How did you sleep? Pretty well, Mrs. Davis. How about you? Well, I wasn't going to mention it, but now that you ask, my insomnia has got me a little worried. You see, for the past three nights, I've gone to bed at 9.30 and slept right through the night. <laughs> well, what's wrong with that? I missed the sleeping pill I'm supposed to take at 10. <laughs> but I guess I'll be all right. Tell me, Connie, why did you leave me a note to wake you? What happened to your alarm clock? Oh, it met with an accident yesterday morning. What kind of an accident? I threw it in the bathtub and stamped on it. <laughs> Thanks for getting me up, though. I've got to be down at Carney's repair shop at 10. That's when they promised my car would be ready. Oh, goodness, it's about time. How long has your car been in that repair shop, Connie? Off and on, about 12 weeks. <laughs> How long have you had your car? Off and on, about 12 weeks. <laughs> I hope it holds together today. I'm driving Mr. Boynton to the football game with Clay City High. Madison didn't play them last year, did it? No, this is the first time. They say Clay City's an awfully nice little town. It's about 60 miles from here, I understand. 55 as the crow flies. You ought to make it in a couple of hours easy. Well, I'd better allow three. My car makes about the same time a crow does on the ground. <laughs> Well, hurry and get dressed, Connie. I've got a surprise recipe for your breakfast. I hope it's not as surprising as the last one, Mrs. Davis. Blubber burgers fried in deep seal fat. <laughs> uh, don't you, uh, I'm afraid I haven't time for breakfast today. I'll just have a glass of milk. Hmm? Well, uh, don't you even want to know what the surprise consists of? Oh, no, thank you. Well, I'll save it for you till tomorrow. It'll keep fine. Although a little penicillin may form on the mold. <laughs> Probably do it a world of good. Well, I have to be running along now, Mrs. Davis. I've got to get my car, pick up Mr. Boynton, and then it's off to Clay City. Just think, we'll be alone together for 55 whole miles. Oh, wonderful, Connie. I hope Madison runs up a big score. Me too, but I'm more concerned about scoring with Mr. Boynton. <laughs> I just want to finish this fender here. That finished it. <laughs> uh, is my car ready, Joe? Your car? Mm -hmm. Let's see. What did you bring it in for last? One of the headlights needed a new bulb. Oh, yes, yes. Step into the office here a minute, will you? I'll get the sheet on that car. Have a seat, Miss Brooks. Thank you. Should be right here in the desk. Was that a Nash, Miss Brooks? 1935 convertible? Yes, a late 35. <laughs> No, it wasn't a convertible until I tried to go through a railroad crossing with the bars down. <laughs> oh, yes, yes, here we are. You say one of the headlights needed a new bulb? That's what you told me. Funny, our mechanic found quite a bit of other work to do on the car. What other work? Well, your spark plugs were shot, so he replaced them, and the points were practically gone. Where to? <laughs> your valves needed grinding, and the wheels were way out of line. Of course, that could have been caused by the warped axle. Practically no barbarian action left in the sprockets at all. <laughs> and your transmission and differential had to be thoroughly revamped. How did I get the car down here? On my back? 
the steering knuckle was way off, so he had to pack that. But that wasn't too much trouble. I'm glad. He was down there ripping off the old brake lining anyway. <laughs> the new voltage regulator we put in should help that shorten the wiring considerably. And a new oil filter will keep your motor cleaner. Now, just a minute, Joe. You didn't say a word to me about any of those things when I left the car here. Well, of course not, Miss Brooks. I had no way of knowing about them until our mechanic checked the car thoroughly. Any more than I could have told you about the clutch lining. What about the clutch lining? Let's not speak ill of the dead. <laughs> it was shredded. And that probably affected the rear end situation. Rear end? It was really dragging. <laughs> now, uh, now, do you want me to total up your bill with the new radiator that's coming or just charge you for the soldering job temporarily? Like I say, Joe, what do I owe you for the light bulb? <laughs> oh, we'll just throw that in. And uh, please don't feel that we invented any of these difficulties, Miss Brooks. Every item on your bill was strictly legitimate. May I never smear grease on my hands and charge for a lube job if it wasn't. I've got a good mind to get the Falcon after you. <laughs> What's the total? Well, uh, let me see. Uh, 1450 plus uh, 798. 46 for parts, uh, 18 for transport, $9 for the distributor of the crown, $6 for the crown. Well, it's uh, $112.49, Miss Brooks. <laughs> call it one thirteen even. <laughs> we'll call it one twelve even, and I'll have to pay you off by the week, Joe. Oh, that's perfectly all right. Say $10 a week for 20 weeks. 20 weeks? That would be $200. Carrying charges, Miss Brooks. <laughs> Plus lawyer's fees. Lawyer's fees? Well, sure, you're a school teacher, aren't you? Yes. Well, you couldn't keep paying $10 a week out of your salary. A lawsuit's inevitable. <laughs> <laughs> well, if I can't make the payments, I'll sell you the car. Are you kidding? With the repair work this heap needs, I wouldn't give you 100 bucks for it. Look, I've got to have the car today, Joe. I'm driving Mr. Boynton to Clay City to see our football team play. Now, what would it cost me if you put back the shredded clutch lining and the gone points, hmm? Well, never mind. <laughs> never mind that, Miss Brooks. How much cash have you got on you? Well, I got paid yesterday and just took care of my rent and a few small bills, so I've still got about $19. We'll take it. I believe in one price. You say $19, I say $19. Hand it over. Here you are. And Mother will be happy to know you let me keep my locket. <laughs> On to Mr. Boynton Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden, will continue in just a moment But first, here is Vern Smith with an important announcement Palmolive Soap is giving away prizes worth $67,000 A grand prize of $25,000 in one lump sum Or $100 a month for life And that's not all There are over 2,000 prizes in Palmolive's big treasure chest contest Ford sedans Westinghouse laundromat From Silver Fox scarves Toastmaster toasters And it's easy to enter Complete the last line of this jingle A fresher, brighter looking skin Is something I would like to win I'll get Palmolive Soap today Da -da, da -da, da -da, da -da. Write your last line on a plain sheet of paper or use an official entry blank giving complete rules obtainable at your dealers. Include your own and dealer's name and address and mail with the big word palm olive from the front of the wrapper of one regular and one bath size cake of palm olive soap to palm olive, box 92, New York 8, New York. Now here's the jingle once more. A fresher, brighter looking skin is something I would like to win. I'll get palm olive soap today. Da 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 da. Mail your entry to Palm Olive, Box 92, New York 8, New York. But hurry, contest closes soon. Get palm olive soap for a lovelier complexion. Remember, doctors prove palm olive's beauty results. <laughs> Well, I finally got to Mr. Boynton's apartment house to take him to the football game. He was standing in front of the door holding a big box with a cellophane top, the kind you put an orchid corsage into. I said, Mr. Boynton, you shouldn't have bought me flowers. His answer was typical of the man. With a modest smile, he hung his head, blushed, and said, I didn't. <laughs> oh. Well, then what's in that box? MacDougall. He's a wee one, isn't he? Uh, MacDougall's a bullfrog, Miss Brooks. I took him home from the laboratory yesterday. I don't like the sound of his voice. It's kind of raspy. 
Maybe he's got a man in his throat. <laughs> Are you taking him with us to the football game? Oh, I'm afraid I'll have to. You see, his neck's pretty sore, and I put a compress on it. Wouldn't want him to scratch it off. He, oh, he should have had his tonsils out long ago. Maybe his folks couldn't afford it. <laughs> well, get in, Mr. Boynton, and put McDougal in the back. Oh, I'd rather not, Miss Brooks. Let's keep him up here in front between us. Goody. I've always wanted to go to a football game with a bullfrog. <laughs> well, are you all set, Mr. Boynton? All set, Miss Brooks. Then we're off to Clay City. It's a beautiful day for football, isn't it? Oh, yes, it is. You like football, Mr. Boynton? Well, frankly, Miss Brooks, I, uh, I haven't seen many games. Oh, that's a shame. We teachers should set an example in school spirit for the student body. That's why I'm going today. That's one reason, anyway. I beg your pardon? I said I think we should show more interest in school events. Oh, I agree, Miss Brooks. Who's pitching for us today? <laughs> well, we tried to get Satchel Page, but he's tied up. <laughs> of course, we have some good backfield men pitching passes. That's what you meant, isn't it? Oh, I guess so. I'm afraid you'll have to explain quite a bit of the rules, Miss Brooks. Oh, you'll get on to it, Mr. Boynton. Meanwhile, we've got 55 miles to travel together. Just you and I. <laughs> I was hoping you'd feel that way about it. That, that was McDougal. Now, now, quiet, Mac. I want you to rest your throat. Yes, do that, Mac. Now, where was I? Uh, you were saying we've got 55 miles to drive together. That's right. Just the three of us. A man, a girl, a bullfrog. Uh -huh. oh, well, we'll have fun anyway. <laughs> I know a wonderful little restaurant en route where we can stop for lunch. It's called the Blue Goose Cafe. Oh, fine. Uh, look, Miss Brooks, uh, isn't that one of our students pushing that car across the street? Why, oh, yes, that's Walter Denton. Maybe we can give him a hand. Hello, Walter. Oh, hello, Miss Brooks. How do, Mr. Boynton? Oh, hello, Walter. Something wrong with your car? Oh, nothing unusual. It just won't go. <laughs> I think my clutch lining is gone. Oh, well, take a little of mine, Walter. I've got a new batch. <laughs> Gee, of all times to fizzle out on me. I had my heart set on going to the Clay City football game today. Well, why don't you come along with us? What do you say, Miss Brooks? With us? Well, I'm sure Walter would rather get there under his own power. Maybe we ought to try and get his car started. Hmm? Oh, it's no use, Miss Brooks. It won't go. I know this car like the back of my hand. And the back of my hand to you. <laughs> well, it isn't that you're not welcome to come with us, Walter. I know. Why don't we tow you in your car? Tow me. Well, I don't understand the point of that, Miss Brooks. You wouldn't. <laughs> I haven't got any tow rope anyway, Miss Brooks. Well, maybe we could push you in your car. You know, bumper to bumper and shove. Then we got, when we got to a nice downgrade... Bye, bye, Walter. <laughs> oh, you're kidding me, Miss Brooks. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. I'll sit in the back here. You and Mr. Boynton won't even know we're in the car. All right, Walter, hop in. I wouldn't want you to miss the game. Well, here goes, off to Clay. Did you say we're in the car? Sure, I've got a date with Harriet Conklin. She's a real football bug. Bug? <laughs> <laughs> Don't get excited, Mac It's just an expression She'll be waiting in front of her house, Miss Brooks It's just a mile or two out of your way Naturally But we'd better hurry if we want to have some lunch before the game Hang on uh, Turn right at this corner, Miss Brooks You'd better slow down for it oh, Look out for that milk wagon Boy, that was close <laughs> Oh, are you still in the car, Walter? <laughs> I mean, I hope I didn't unnerve you Oh, that's all right, Miss Brooks I'm used to driving with woman drivers My mother's one, you know <laughs> One what, Walter? It's only natural for drivers to make mistakes But my mom has made some whoppers That I can see <laughs> Look, isn't that Harriet standing under that tree? Oh, yeah, that's her uh, Pull over to the curb, Miss Brooks Yes, sir. Shall I hold the meter? <laughs> Hiya, Harriet. My car's all tattered and torn, so Miss Brooks is taking us to the game. Well, bless your little pointed head. Hello, Miss Brooks. Hello, Harriet. How are you, Harriet? Mr. Boynton, 
How nice to have you along. Get that leer out of your voice, Harriet. Mr. Boynton's been spoken for. <laughs> In fact, he's been spoken and croaked for. <laughs> what in the world was that sound? Oh, this is MacDougall, Harriet, one of my favorite frogs. You can introduce them formally when we're rolling again. Hop in. <clears throat> Not you, Mac. <laughs> we'll get in back. After you, my lady. Thank you, my man. All set? Well, we're off for Clay City. Oh, don't start yet, Miss Brooks. Daddy's coming down off the porch. Hi, Daddy. Hello, everyone. Oh, hello, Mr. Conklin. Bye, Mr. Conklin. Uh, that is, how do you do, sir? How's Madison's favorite principal today? Hmm? At ease. <laughs> <laughs> I was just reading about the game with Clay City High. Should be quite a contest. Oh, yes, sir. That's where we're going today. At least we're starting today. <laughs> Denton, must you sit so close to my daughter? I'm not sitting close to her, Mr. Conklin. She's sitting close to me. I'm over as far as I can get. I've got to pin him down, Father. Walter's the elusive type. Of course, he's not a real happy heartache, but he's good for a minor throb or two. Ah, <laughs> cut it out, Harriet. <laughs> oh, stop those nonsensical noises. Now, there's quite a bit of work I could do this afternoon, filing reports to the Board of Education and so forth. You have a nice day for it, Mr. Conklin. Well, we'd be getting along now. But I got to thinking. Conklin, I said to myself, or rather, Mr. Conklin, I said, <laughs> you haven't seen a football game in a month of Sundays. Let's take in this Clay City game. Then you mean you're going along with us? That's just super, Daddy, isn't it, Walter? Yeah, super. <laughs> well, it'll be a pleasure to have you along, Mr. Conklin. Oh, thank you, Boynton. But what about you, Miss Brooks? It's your car. How do you feel about my coming along? Just ginger peachy, Mr. Conklin. <laughs> well, let's get started if we're going. It's getting kind of late and we want oh, to Oh, I won't be any time at all. I'll go back to the house and ask Mrs. Conklin to speed things up. Mrs. Conklin? Yes, yes. She's been out in the yard all morning planting and she's quite dirty. I'll tell her to hurry with a bath and not fuss much with dressing. I'll tell her to slip on anything, Mr. Conklin. A loose rug will do. <laughs> Well, here we are. Sorry to keep you waiting. Hello, Miss Brooks, Mr. Boynton. Hello, Miss, Mrs. Conklin. Uh, how are you, ma'am? <laughs> Walter's here, too. Hello, Walter. Hi, Mrs. Conklin. Uh, where do you want to sit? Well, I think that you two should be separated. So, Martha, if you just sit between Walter and Harriet, I'll sit up front between Miss Brooks and Mr. Boynton. <laughs> Fine. Now, if we can only get somebody to sit between McDougal. Uh, I'd better hold him on my lap. There we go, Mac. Pity he doesn't drive. We could change places. <laughs> you ready? Ah, uh, we're all set, Miss Brooks. Uh, do you know the road? Well, not offhand, Mr. Conklin, but I've got some maps in my glove compartment. Well, I'd better get them out then, Miss Brooks. Should be a very simple matter getting to Clay City. Uh, let's see here. Route 68 into 44, then west. No, it's east, I guess it is, on 106. Well, what are you waiting for, Miss Brooks? For the directions, Mr. Conklin. Oh, I'll give you those as we go along. Just start her up. Well, we're on our way, Harriet. Oh, isn't it fun, Walter? Please, children, you're squeezing me. It should happen to both of us. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Brooks, do you mind turning your radio on? I understand there's going to be a new clue on Sing It Again. All right, Harriet. Gee, the prizes are up to $26,000. And here, folks, is your new Sing It Again clue. The Phantom Voice is no Ziegfeld girl, but a Ziegfeld guy gave her a whirl. Thank you. The $26,000 will come in handy. Who do you think the Phantom Voice is, Miss Brooks? Well, if I knew the answer to that, Harriet, I'd be able to walk right up to your father and say... Yes, Miss Brooks? <laughs> Hello, Mr. Conklin. <laughs> We've been going quite a while on Route 68. Shouldn't we have switched over to 44 by now? Are you questioning my directions, Miss Brooks? Well, no, Mr. Conklin, but... I was a major in the last war, you know. <laughs> and as such, spent considerable time in command of a transport group at Camp Bobrick, Ohio. I'm sure we're on the right road. And the caissons go rolling along. Oh, you have quite a voice, Mr. Conklin. Oh, thank you, Boynton. I did a bit of singing around the barracks now and then. Yum tum 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 tum. 
<laughs> oh, that's very cute, Mr. Conklin. Oh, that was Mac, wasn't it? He must be hungry, Mr. Boynton. I know I am. Shall we stop for some lunch at the Blue Goose? Well, where's the Blue Goose, Miss Brooks? Well, I haven't been there since I was a girl, but... Gosh, Miss Brooks, do you think it's still standing? <laughs> Now, just a minute, Walter. How old do you think I am, anyway? Oh, I'd say you're about Of course to... it's still standing. <laughs> There's only one place to go if you want a delicious luncheon. That's the Pink Flamingo. Oh, where's that, Osgood? You never mentioned it in front of me before. Well, the last time I went there, I was with a bunch of the boys. Hmm. Are you sure you can find this blue goose, Miss <laughs> Yes, I think so, Mr. Conklin. Let's see, where are we now? Well, there's a signboard over there, Route 118. Funny, that isn't on this map at all. Uh, you'd better bear left at this fork, Miss Brooks. Very well, Mr. Conklin, but I don't think we're on the right road. This hill ahead of us is pretty steep. I hope the motor doesn't heat up too much. This radiator's just been patched temporarily. Well, up we go. Over hill, over down, yummy, dummy, dummy, dum, and the caissons go... <laughs> What was that? The caisson stopped rolling. <laughs> at least this one did. I'll get out and look at the motor. Uh, keep your seat, Mr. Boynton. As head of a transport battalion, I had considerable to do with motors during my tour of duty. Yeah, no. Let's see. Let's see. Well, nothing wrong with the tappets. Radiator's still in one piece. Hand me a hammer, somebody. There are some tools under this seat, I think. Oh, here, let's get out. Here we are. Here's a hammer, Mr. Conklin. Oh, thank you. Now we'll just tap this water pipe here. Oh, be careful, Mr. Conklin. Please, Miss Brooks. I know motors backwards. One more good tap should do it. That did it, all right. Well, let's get out and push, folks. We're off to the nearest garage. <laughs> Well, there you are, folks. There you are. Good as new. Nothing would have happened in the first place if some knucklehead hadn't hit the pipes with a hammer. <laughs> what? Why, how dare... Why, who do you think... Why have you Who's no... Who's this huffing and puffing? Oh, please. Uh, this is Mr. Knucklehead. I mean... <laughs> I mean, Mr. Conklin. Yeah. He's my principal. Uh, oh, now, calm down, well, Mr. Let's... Conklin. Remember, this... everything's all right I... now. We're uh... off to Clay, Clay uh... City. <laughs> Where do you figure we are now, Miss Brooks? Well, I think According we're... to my calculations, we've been traveling due east on Route 94 for one hour and ten minutes at an approximate mean speed of 40 miles per hour. Any tailwind, Mr. Conklin? <laughs> oh, look, we're, we're coming into a town. Of course we're coming to a town, just as I figured. This is it. Uh, Miss Brooks, ask that pedestrian where the stadium is. What pedestrian? Hey, look where you're driving! <laughs> Oh, that pedestrian. Uh, pardon me, could you tell us where the Clay City Stadium is? Well, I can't be positive, but my guess would be Clay City. Well, isn't this Clay City? No, no, this is Boonville. If you'd be kind enough to give me a lift home, though, I could show you where Clay City is. I live just a few miles from there in Flagden. Well, there really isn't much room. We've got three in front and three in back now. Well, it's not much of a ride from here. Perhaps I could sit on this gentleman's lap. What? Sit on my lap? Oh, better take him, dear. We've only got a short time if we want to see the kickoff. Oh, very well. Come on. I hope I'm not too heavy. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'll change my position. <laughs> Start the car, Miss Brooks. All right, Mr. Conklin. And this time we're really off to Clay City. Yeah, thanks a lot for the lift. You're welcome. Now, how do we get to Clay City from here? Oh, that's 29 miles back down the road. We pass through it on the way. What? Why, you? It's so long. Folks. You? 29 miles back? Why, that, we could have been... He said that it was only... Daddy, he, remember what? your blood pressure. Is 
jeers get awful red, don't they? <laughs> now, see here, everybody. We've got to organize this expedition. There's been no unity of command, that's the trouble. Everybody's talking at once. Um. Oh. <laughs> Shut that toad up, Poynton. He's not a toad, Mr. Conklin. MacDougall's a frog. A giant bullfrog with tonsils. Quiet, quiet, Miss Brooks. Now turn this car around and go that way, and don't stop going that way until I tell you to. Off to Clay City. <laughs> Well, this is Clay City, all right. There's the Clay City National Bank, Clay City, City Lumberyard. Now, for heaven's sake, Miss Brooks, before you get lost again, ask somebody where the stadium is. All right, Mr. Conklin. Oh, there's a bus parked over there. I'll ask the driver. Excuse me, but could you tell me where the Clay City Stadium is? Uh, sure, it's four blocks left and three right. Oh, thanks a lot. That's the first definite answer I've had all day. Well, I ought to know where the stadium is. I got the Clay City team in this bus. We just beat Madison High 89 to nothing. <laughs> 89 to nothing? May I ask you one more question? Sure, what is it? Did they put up a good fight? <laughs> Eve Arden, as our Miss Brooks, returns in just a moment. But first... Dream girl, dream girl, beautiful luster cream girl. Tonight, show him how much lovelier your hair can look after a luster cream shampoo. Only luster cream brings you K. Dumas' magic formula blend of secret ingredients plus gentle lanolin. Gives loveliness lather even in hardest water. Glamorizes your hair as you wash it. Luster Cream, not a soap, not a liquid, but a dainty cream shampoo, leaves hair fragrantly clean, free of loose dandruff, glistening with sheen, soft, manageable, gives new beauty to all hairdos or permanents. Four-ounce jar, one dollar. Smaller sizes, either tubes or jars. Tonight, try Luster Cream Shampoo and be a dream girl, dream girl, beautiful luster cream girl. You owe your crowning glory to a luster cream shampoo. And now, once again, here is our Miss Brooks. Well, the trip back from Clay City was uneventful. I dropped Walter and the Conklins at their house instead of on their heads. And though I missed the football game, the rest of my plans worked out pretty well. Mr. Boynton asked me to dinner, and without Mr. Conklin in the car, we had no trouble finding the Blue Goose Cafe. Dinner was delightful. The orchestra was playing softly, and Mr. Boynton turned to me and said, That's my favorite tune, Miss Brooks. Would you care to dance? <laughs> Sorry, Mr. Boynton, but I promised this one to Mac. <laughs> Next week, tune into another Our Miss Brooks show brought to you by Parmali Soap, your beauty hope, and luster cream shampoo for soft, glamorous green girl hair. Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden, is produced by Larry Burns, written and directed by Al Lewis, with music by Wilbur Hatch. Dentists know what cleans teeth best, and over 4,000 dentists say Colgate Tooth Powder with a two-minute routine gets teeth sparkling and super clean. So to remove dull film and get your teeth shining clean, just brush teeth two minutes, morning and night, with Colgate Tooth Powder. Brush inside, outside, and biting surfaces. Always brush away from the gums. See how quickly this gets teeth naturally bright. It removes dull film that improper brushing misses. And Colgate Tooth Powder also sweetens your breath. Try it. Buy Colgate Tooth Powder today. More mystery liberally sprinkled with laughs, listen to Mr. and Mrs. North, the exciting, fun-packed adventures of an amateur Park Avenue detective and his beautiful wife. Tune in Tuesday evenings over most of these same stations. And be with us again next week at the same time for another comedy episode of Our Miss Brooks. Bob Lamont speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting...